when we ran up and down Miami Beach, you could have barely see the beach. So many people. There's so many people. And there was just this ordained wave from heaven that sent them skyward. And Johnny and I were bracing for that very same wave because we were right with him. And I saw the guys go by on the cigarettes with the girls on the back on the cushions. I said, I think they're smarter than me. In your own personal opinion, what has been your greatest achievement on the water? I would say the... Thanks, Warren. Thanks for taking the time here. So first question I have is just what initially drew you to the powerboat racing and what has motivated you to continue racing throughout the years? I was stupid then and I'm stupid now. It's that <laughs> simple. That simple. No, I, I used to be a sailboat uh, competitor and um, when we used to sit out in uh, South Florida with no wind and I saw the guys <laughs> go by on the cigarettes with the girls on the back uh, on the cushions, I said, I think they're smarter than me. <laughs> so as soon as I finished my sailing career and I uh, moved to power boats and fortunately met some guys in South Florida who took me out in a race boat and I got hooked and it just keeps grabbing me and pulling me back in every number of years I come back. And this is just for heritage and nostalgia for Apache basically. I, they started me in the sport um, in 86, got me into it. I was successful and won some championships with Apache. They've been always so accommodating to me that I felt the brand really deserves recognition into the future and that's what we're doing. That, I think that's a great answer to actually answer my next question about what Apache means to you. So I'll skip that one and I'll move on. Just You touched on your, your distinguished career and some of the achievements that you've had throughout your career. In your own personal opinion, what has been your greatest achievement on the water? I would say the 203 uh, World Championships with Johnny in the Bacardi boat where it was a two boat race for the third race. And uh, we were really having troubles getting by the, um, the snack attack boat, as I recall. And there was just this ordained wave from heaven that sent them skyward. And Johnny and I were bracing for that very same wave because we were right with him. Yeah. And it never hit. <laughs> and he just went sort of behind me. And we just protected our lead for the next 10 laps. and and pulled off that victory and that was that was really special that wow one. it sounds like you had poseidon on your side for that one that's that was I've, I've been bitten by a lot of bad luck as most competitive racers have been over the years and this is one time that gave it back to me nice that's that's awesome um now the the question everyone's been wondering is uh, you've done a lot of work to the Apache 47 from last year, and last year you also broke a world speed record at a top speed of uh, about 94, I believe. What do you th What is your prediction for this year, and what have you done to the boat to improve it? Well, there's, it's a mixed bag because on the one hand, I want to keep it preserved as it raced in period, but unfortunately parts for the stern drives mainly are just not available anymore. Anything you get is used, and it's... Uh, hit or miss whether they're going to be uh, appropriate parts that are going to work when you're buying used stuff. So if I want to continue and run these events, you got to be able to run flat out. And mm -hmm. I had to buy uh, new number six drives and re-rig the boat for that. Uh, that was um, majorly time. You know, obviously it's costly, but it was uh, certainly well worth the investment because the power that we're running is the old power rebuilt a number of times including this year but it's like 700 barely 750 horse and uh so the drives will have less than no effort on them because that's uh pleasure boat stuff and in terms of horsepower and so those were the major changes uh, we always do a rebuild um about every 100 hours and the drives are fresh so um we should be uh good to go for this event I was just hoping that uh, we get a little rougher water because that's when this boat really comes into its own. Against the modern uh, boats with the big horsepower, we're obviously at a distinct disadvantage until it gets really rough. But so, can what, you touch what, on that a little more? Why do you think? Why is the Apache, you know, made for the rough water, and why does it perform better in the rough water compared to some of these newer boats? Uh, well, for one, it's a full-blown race boat. Uh, it's very light, probably too light, and. Uh, Mark designed something that just seemed to have the correct length, and we're running mainly against 41 and 38s. There is 147 outer limits here, but they have a flatter bottom and yep. they're stepped, 
And so their rough water capabilities are somewhat compromised to a, our DV with no steps. And, uh, but they have, you know, with two engines, they got way more horsepower than we do. So uh, it's, um, it'll be uh, troublesome, as I said, in, in the calm. But I think given our, our, where we didn't have to preserve the drives to make it last year, and they were done when we got here, uh, we can run faster. And so we're hoping just to go faster than we did last year. Yep. And I'm, we're not really too much worried about the competition. Awesome. Great answer. So with that, and I know, you know, this year you're, you'll most likely be going faster. Last year, I think the top speed was about 94. I've never gone that fast in a boat. What goes through your mind when you're traveling that fast at those speeds? Or is anything, or are you just trying to stay the course? Well, uh, since I have so much more later experience in cats going 140, 150, 160, yep. fully enclosed boats, it's a whole different sensation. I don't want to say it's be like arrogant and say it's like slow motion, but it's more of a real fast pleasure boat ride that most people can get today in their mm -hmm. pleasure boats, if not faster. So that part of it isn't as um, engaging as worrying about oil pressure and temperature because we're running to the limit with lower horsepower. So you still have engine and motor and electrical gremlins that can creep in. So you're very just mindful of the gauges yep. and temperatures, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure you make it to the end. Uh, it's a long tow back. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, 128 miles. So um, two more questions for you. And, you know, this one I think you can really touch on, touch upon. So what do you think could be done to increase the popularity and visibility of powerboat racing among the younger audience? Uh, I think what has to happen is that when you do these kinds of races, that you really grab weekend beach or lakefront exposure. Yep. And in our heyday in the sport in the late 80s, when we ran up and down Miami Beach, you, you could have barely see the beach. So many people. There's so many people because it's just a free spectacle and the races were 150 miles. So it was hours of a lot of noise, which everybody loves it yep. at a younger age. Uh, the old guys like me now wear earplugs. And um, the spectacle, especially in, in the coastal towns where the water can be rough and you get the deck-to-deck -deck racing, it's, it's quite exciting. And uh, it just gives something for the beachgoers to see. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this even today when you go up to uh, Cocoa Beach or Fort Myers, they start lining up at like six, seven in the morning to get a great spot on the beach to watch the race. Unfortunately, the races are so short, but so your attention span, you just kind of get comfortable in your chair and the race is over. So uh, I think you just got to bring them in shore, but not into small lakes because they're, 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 there's no excitement. The boats yeah, just are glued to the water. And going to Bimini and back is fun for us but it does nothing for spectators. So if I was doing this endurance, my recommendation would be to go to the coastal towns where the entire race course is seen, but you just go from Miami down to Marathon and back yep. to get your, your, and I just made up that city. I'm not sure if it's too far, but you just go all the way down and all the way back. So you go north, south instead of east, west and then everybody sees it. It's a great and, idea. And along the way, vendors are there and everybody is, you know, for each community on the way down, it's fun, There's something to watch. That's a great answer, yeah. And the, you know, the last question I have for you is, is really just about um, some advice you have to other racers, someone who's looking to get started in the sport, just, you know, getting started, or maybe they already have a, a career, but they would like their career to somewhat resemble yours. Um, what advice would you give to someone just starting out? I basically just starting out, there's a class called stock class, which my nephew competes in. And they have the most boats in the fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, the boats from even eight, 10 years ago are still competitive. The hulls, the engine are fixed. You have to buy that motor. You can't adjust it. You can't touch it. It's all sealed. So the boats are within a mile an hour of each other speed wise. And it's just who sets their weight up properly. Better driver. Uh, better driver. Uh, tuning, the, your prop selection is, is pretty much unlimited. 
you got to practice a lot because on the race course the the turns become so critical and you just can't afford a, a, a slip the sport's quite affordable because you're not rebuilding motors every 10 minutes and the hulls <clears throat> the used hulls have no real pleasure application so they're only good for a race boat and and that's where i'd start find out if you really like the sport before you step up to the bigger classes and uh as I said, it's, it's such a hyper-competitive class. It's it's very exciting. I did it uh, a few years ago with Gary Ballou. We just we we wanted to just go to Key West together, and on the last day, we you know it was if we had won that race or beat one other competitor, we win the world. So it's um, really a great class, and I I highly recommend. That's where I start. I wouldn't start in the V bottom because it's a little uh, less expensive. But the boats don't go fast enough, yeah. and these cats are over 100 miles an hour in the calm, so it's exciting. And the starts are amazing because there's so many guys. Well, we can hear another boat in the background, but I just want to say thank you to Lauren Libel. Best of luck today with the Apache 47. Thanks thank so you. much. Thanks for all your help. Thank you.